Whether it is the colors, sounds, or the smell of popcorn, everyone seems to love the circus. Acrobats, colorful costumes, animals, trapeze artists, and the clowns all add to the magic and wonder. Artists have always been part of the circus, too. They help design the advertisements and posters, which help bring in customers. Paintings of the attractions people will see adorn the tents and build excitement. Even the tickets are part of the fun. But artists who did not work for the circus have been inspired by it as well. The circus presents a world that is both happy and heart stopping. We marvel at the skill of the performers as they keep us on the edge of our seats with daring feats of danger. And we feel relieved when the act ends safely. The clown who falls on his face during a routine makes us laugh, but we know he's okay, and we are glad that it is not us who has just been embarrassed. Even though they entertain us, the circus performers are often seen as outsiders living on the fringe of society. Visual artists have been drawn to the way that the contrast between good and evil, happy and sad, safety and danger of the circus mirrors everyday life. They have used images of the circus to help express their ideas about life's thrills and conflicts. Henri Matisse was one of the best known artists of the early 20th century. He became ill when he was older and was restricted to his bed and could no longer paint. Matisse began to cut shapes from colored paper, and with the help of an assistant, he began making collages, which would become known as his cutouts. In 1941, he began to work on a book of colorful artworks. Although the book would eventually be called Jazz, his early cutouts were inspired by the circus. As a child in Russia, Marc Chagall loved to watch the traveling acrobats that would perform in his town. He moved to Paris when he was older to pursue his career as an artist and often attended the circus there. Chagall's style of painting was always colorful and full of fantasy. The circus was the perfect subject for him, and he painted versions of it throughout his lifetime. His paintings capture the energy and the mystery the circus held for him. Cindy Sherman is known for using herself as a model in her photographs, but her pictures are not self portraits. Sherman's early photographs examine the way women are seen in society. After the tragedy of the World Trade Center in 2001, Sherman was looking for a way to express her feelings. For Sherman, clowns symbolize people who need to put on a happy face even if they are sad. She made a series of digital photographs of herself in clown makeup using a computer to enhance their strange appearance. Looking at them can make us all feel a bit uncomfortable, which is what art sometimes does. Originally an engineer, Alexander Calder began to study art when he moved to New York City in the 1920s. There, he worked for a magazine and was asked to sketch the Barnum and Bailey Circus by his editor. In 1926, he moved to Paris and met a toy maker who suggested he begin making toys. Calder began using wire, string, cloth, and other found objects to create characters that would ultimately become the Cirque Calder. He created five suitcases full of circus performers, which were controlled by a series of strings and pulleys. Calder would later go on to create other moving sculptures, which came to be known as the Calder Mobiles. Colombian artist Fernando Botero is known for painting figures that are overly plump. He has painted politicians, ordinary people, and famous masterpieces in his unique style. Inspired by a traveling circus he encountered in a small town in Mexico, Botero began painting a new series of paintings. He felt the circus provided colors, shapes, and acrobatic poses that he could find nowhere else. He had said that the circus is something everyone understands and that it has a poetry that captures the philosophy of life. Using different media and styles, these five artists use images from the circus to help them express their unique views of the world. <laughs>